So let's start with acid-base balance. Um, so I was telling you about the nursing hub, so that's up there that you can get some of that content if you ever want. Or you can also always uh, email me if there's something that you want uh, put up there. Okay, today is a, a modified day. What we're going to do is we are going to uh, review some of the content and then we're going to play some games related to it. Okay? So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is the basic lab values. Uh, it is very important that you remember what pH is. So what is uh, the normal pH? And I hear from you guys, 7.35 to 7.45, absolutely. What is your um, uh, PCO2? 35 to 45, okay. Um, and then your bicarb? 21 to 28, that's an Iggy number. You will see in some school places that it's 22 to 26. That was actually the one I was raised on. Uh, one is... Uh, a regular number and one's an international number. So you might see either one. We're going to take the wider one for test purposes, 21 to 28. Um, PCO2, PO2 is 80 to 100. A little different from what we think when we think about oxygen saturation, isn't it? And what is oxygen saturation? What should we be there? I'd say 98 to 100 is what we should expect. Uh, do we, we don't tend to get worried until they're under 95, do we? So, um, but yes. Okay, here's some memory joggers for you guys, and this was in the lecture as well. Um, on the lab values, here's that uh, normal pH. We see that 7.35 to 7.45, which is a, a clue that the PCO2 is also 35 to 45. Um, also, we need to always remember that PCO2 and pH always go in opposite directions. As that acid goes uh, up in volume, we are going to have the pH go down. And um, so, and vice versa, we'll see as it goes down, we'll see the pH go up. Bicarb, on the other hand, and pH move together. And so we will have the bicarb. Uh, going up with the pH, and when it goes down, the pH will go down. This is review. So here's those little pictures that a lot of people use, uh, and it's just a question of whether it's useful for you or not. I've never used these, but um, I didn't learn with these. Sometimes it's the way that you were taught, and sometimes you just get a way of knowing it. Uh, there's also a uh, method out there that I think would probably be useful for third semester on how to do compensated, uncompensated uh, ABGs, and it's called tic-tac-toe, um, and I recommend accessing that on the internet. It's a really easy way to do, um, figure out if it's been compensated, but I'm not going to teach you about compensation. That's next semester, okay? We're going to start real simple. So you can see that the seesaw is a great example of the PCO2. And you can see that the swing is a really good one for the bicarb and pH. Here's another one that's really nice about the alkalosis is kicking up the uh, pH, whereas with the uh, acidosis, we're sliding down. It's more memory joggers. One of my favorites that I use all the time, if they're throwing up, it's above the belt, it's acid. If it's below the belt, it's base. So if they're having diarrhea, I know they're losing base. Here is one of uh, Marty's favorite ones that she uses. I never learned it this way. I don't know really how, I must have, I, I think I just, I learned it the way I'm gonna teach you, but this is really a nice, it's just such an easy way to remember uh, respiratory is opposite, metabolic is equal. So it went in Rome, right? Okay. So here's my three steps on how to interpret an ABG. First, you're going to check the pH. Is it abnormal? Is it acidotic below 7.35 or is it alkalotic above 7.45? So then I've decided on that. Then the next stage is what system is causing the problem? Is it going to be respiratory or is it metabolic? And many times I would decide this on the floor based on my patient. 
because they'd already be compensated. So um, I would have to look and say, oh, well, you know, they're a copd -er, and I know it's a respiratory even though they've compensated metabolically. So we look at the PCO2, and is it high or is it low, and is it correlated to the pH? So if the pH is down and the PCO2 is up, we know it's respiratory and vice versa. Uh, if the pH is up and the PCO2 is down, we know it's respiratory as well. So we, def we decide based on looking on the PCO2. Finally, we look at the bicarb level. Is it high or is it low? Uh, and how does it correlate to the pH? And so then we can make a decision about that. So let the games begin. Like I told everyone that was here uh, on time that we have uh, prizes for the winning team. And so we're going to do this the same way we did it last time as far as uh, dividing up into teams. So let's start with you count. Uh, we're counting to six. No, you're going to be one. <laughs> That's right. Six. Okay. You always end up being six at the end, don't you? No, sometimes I go. I, are you guys all in different numbers than you were last time? You, it was so long ago you can't even remember. Okay, well, when you sit down with your group, you'll remember. Okay, so everybody get into your groups. Okay, so you're going to get into teams. When you get into teams, you are going to pick a team name. Were you, all, you guys were together last time, weren't you? No? You two were, but you weren't. Okay. If any of you are in the same group of three, please tell me so I can change you up a little. No, we were in groups of bigger groups last time. No. We were? You're always... You're always in group of threes with me. Okay. All right. So this is the deal. First, get a team name. Second, decide who's going to be the scribe and who's going to be the runner. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask everyone. You don't have to be. You don't have to be uh, secretive on this one. We have the the Pacos. Okay. Who else? What other team name do I have? Drop the base. Yeah, let's spell wrong. Okay. Yeah, that's really good for me as an instructor to encourage you in that. Yeah. Okay. Any other team names? I'm missing. I'm missing some more. Huh? The buffets. <laughs> okay. 
The LSDs, and what does that mean? <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, all right. Anybody else? Okay, I'm missing one. It's you guys? It doesn't have to be perfect. We could say group one. So sad. So sad. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get started. It doesn't really matter what the names are. I can tell that you guys are really not in your very creative, artistic mood today. You're, you're fading on me. Did you have a test on Monday? You had an ATI on Monday? The OB one. Okay. All right. Let's start. Do you all have a runner that's designated and a scribe? Whoever's doing the scribing needs to put the name at the top, and then we'll go. So here's the first one. ABC analysis. Here's your pH, your PCO2, your bicarb, your PO2, and your O2 sat. And the question is, oops, that wasn't right. Uh, uh. Did everyone see the answer? No, this is so easy anyways. Okay, tell me what the, I need to know what is this particular acid-base imbalance or balance. Okay. Everybody up? Okay, good. So let's look at our analysis here. Okay. We got a pH that's 7.48. What is that? Let's do our steps. First we figure out, is it acidic or acidotic? Uh, al uh, alkalotic. Okay, we agree it's alkalotic. So then the next thing is we look at our PCO2. Is it elevated or low? Is it low or high? Low. low. So we have a pH that's high and a, and a, so that means they're opposite, right? So we know it's respiratory. Okay. Everybody agree? And then the next thing is, is that then we look at our um, bicarb to see if maybe that has anything to do with it. It's normal. So we have to say it's respiratory alkalosis. Absolutely. So let's see what we got here. We got respiratory alkalosis. Okay, everybody's good. Okay, next one. Yeah, there's the answer. Okay, here we are with the next one. Go right ahead and make your decision. So analyze this ABG. Okay, so what do we decide? Is it acidotic or is it alkalotic? We agree it's all acidotic. Okay, is the pH, I'm sorry, is the PCO2 elevated or low? It's high. So we have opposite again. So we all agree it's respiratory acidosis. I agree. So it would help if I brought my pen to give you guys your points here. So, respiratory acidosis, acidosis, 
acidosis, acidosis. Okay, everybody good? Okay, the next one is, okay, answer's there. Go right ahead. Okay, let's look at this. So, our pH, what are we, acidic or uh, alkalotic? Okay, we agree. So, now we're going to look at our PCO2. Is it, what is it? It's normal. Okay, then we need to keep on looking, don't we? Bicarb, is it up or down? Down. down. pH is down, so we know it's metabolic acidosis. Right. Okay, so let's look at that here. And... We got everybody's on board with that one. Good. Okay. You're all even. Okay. And the answer, metabolic acidosis. Okay, next one. What do you think of this one? Okay, so when we look at this one, what do you think about the pH? Normal. It's normal. So is our PCO2 normal? Yeah. Yes. Is our bicarb normal? Yeah. Everything's normal, isn't it? So what is that called when it's normal? <laughs> Acid base balance is what it's called, okay? So let's look and see if you all got that correct. No, it's not partially compensated metabolic acidosis. Sorry. sorry. Uh, normal balance, no. I'll give you a half of one there. Normal acid-base balance. Balanced acid-base. Acid-base balance and acid-base balance. Okay. What was that? Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, when it gets we're gonna get into nursing interventions. No. Oh. <laughs> oh gee, we gotta know what to do about this? What a shame. <laughs> mumble mumble. Okay, here we go. Next one. Here's another A B G to analyze. Thank you. 
Okay. So what do you think of the pH on this one? It's high, so we got an alkalosis going on, right? What about your PCO2? Normal, Normal so we know that's not it. And our bicarb? High. High, so high, uh, so ones, they're both going up together, so we've got a metabolic alkalosis. Yes, that's true. Okay, so let me see what you guys wrote as your answers over here. Uh, correct. 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 Good. All right. Everybody got one, that one correct. Here's another one for you. Okay, one more. All right, so what uh, pH, what do you say about that? It's low, so we're acidotic. Um, what about the PCO2? High, High yes. Yeah, bicarb? Normal. Normal, so it has to be respiratory acidosis. Is there any value here that's making you a little worried as well? These are not good, okay? <laughs> so we all, we've decided that this patient is in respiratory acidosis, but we know that, that we need to come in here and, and help this patient oxygenate uh, because they're in trouble. So that is the right answer, respiratory acidosis. So let's look at your answers here. Okay, and now Buffett's, why did you go with metabolic? You read it wrong. Okay. Do you need do you need to move up closer? <laughs> oh. Okay. All righty. Okay. Okay, here's your first uh, we're going to start with some questions and then we'll move into some case studies, okay? So the first one is question number one, a diabetic patient who has not been following his established meal plan did not eat lunch today. What might be the acid-base imbalance? And this would be a uh, acid base imbalance that I want to see. So let's see what you guys decided. We have metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis, very good. You all answered correctly. Because what's happening with this patient? Well, what's happening is, is they are going to have all those ketones there, right? So, OK. So that is one thing we're always worrying about with our diabetic patients when they're not following their meal plan, 
when they're missing meals, when they're not taking their insulin or the anti-diabetic, we can uh, really get messed up here. So the answer is metabolic acidosis. Very good. Okay, next question. The patient has experienced several fractured ribs after being involved in an automobile accident. She is receiving pain medication frequently. What might be the acid-base imbalance? Rose may have to take over the job. But it's legible. <laughs> but it's legible. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's look at this patient. First off, we know they have fractured ribs. What do we know about when a patient has fractured ribs? They, can't they cannot expand. They're not going to breathe as deeply as they should, even though they know they should. <laughs> so we already have a diminished volume that the patient's going to take in. And then we add on the pain medication. So we're going to even depress that respiratory uh, effort even more. So the respiratory, the acid-based imbalance would be respiratory acidosis. So let's see if you all got that one. You did. One, two. Okay, good job. All right, next question. The patient is experiencing a cardiac arrest. The possible outcome for this patient in the form of an acid-base imbalance is? Thought I had done it. <laughs> Okay, 30 more seconds. Okay, so what is happening with this patient? Um, what are the things we have to think about when a patient is in cardiac arrest? What type of acid base imbalance is going on? Is it respiratory? Is it metabolic? Or is it both? It's both. Because respiratory, they're hypoventilating. In fact, they're not breathing. So we've got a respiratory acidosis going on. 
but we also have that accumulation of lactic acid in the body, so we're going to end up with metabolic acidosis as well. So our patients are both. So when I, ah, got to leave my felt tip pen over here. Okay, so for those of you that did both, we got about that base is the only one. Oh, and drop the base. Okay. Does that make sense to the rest of you? You were probably sitting there going, yeah, this one, but yeah, but that one. Well, they're both. And that's why those patients, you'll see those P, that pH really dropping on us. Yes. No, this is, this is, they're in cardiac arrest, means they're not breathing. <laughs> but good try. I like, I like you trying to find another alternative. So they're both respiratory and metabolic acidosis. <laughs> okay, question four. The nurse is evaluating the laboratory work of a patient who has uncontrolled metabolic acidosis. Which abnormal labs would result from this condition? So what labs would I see with a patient with metabolic acidosis? One more team. Oh, here it comes. Okay, good. So let's look at these different uh, things. First off, let's just go down the typical thing that we would see in our labs. What, with our pH, what would you see? So our pH would be down. What would our PCO2 be? Pro normal, in unless we're getting some compensation. We're not doing any compensation here. So PCO2 should be normal, so I shouldn't see that one. Um, bicarb, it should be low, low right? Um, and then your PO2 and your O2 sats, do you think they're going to be changed? Maybe, maybe not. I wouldn't put that one down as abnormal. But what other labs do we look at besides the ABGs? Potassium. We like to look at potassium, yes. And so what would the potassium be with acidosis? Elevated, that's right. So let's uh, look at the answers here. We will have the pH be down, the bicarb be down, and the potassium up. Okay, so let's look at this one here. Uh, hyperglycemia. <laughs> now, I see a few of you have hyperglycemia on here. You're assuming that this is from a diabetic. It could, be. it could be, but it could be a renal patient. So I'm not going to take it. Okay. So uh, this one, one, two, three. That was a really weak one, wasn't it? One, two, three. <laughs> I 
You have 11 and a half. It looks pretty, pretty I'll have to clean that one up. That, that make you happy? Okay. Okay, let's look at some case studies now. When we look at the case studies, let's go over this case study because there's going to be two elements. The first one is you're going to give me the uh, ABG analysis and then we're going to talk about what you're going to do. So the first thing you're going to give me is the ABG analysis. So Sandra Stein, 36, has type 1 diabetes. She has had the flu for the last four days and hasn't eaten or taken her insulin. She's confused and lethargic. During your admission assessment, you note that she's breathing rapidly and that her breath has a fruity odor. Her ABG is on 40% oxygen and her glucose level are as follows. So we see a pH. PCO2, bicarb, O2sat, and a glucose. So make your analysis and bring that up, and then we'll go to the next part. Your ABG analysis. No, I want you to bring up the ABG. Let's do it. In, we're going to do it in two parts. First, bring up the ABG analysis. And, of course, we all know that this uh, 7.15... Hmm, this patient really wouldn't be alive. So uh, let's look at your different ones. We have decided that she's acidotic, and we've decided that she's metabolic acidosis, right? So looking at this, we have metabolic acidosis. Okay, everybody's right. Now the next question is, after the ABGs is what are you going to do for this patient? So let me see if I have ABG analysis and here, what should you do?
Okay, I'm giving you guys 30 more seconds, and then you need to come forward with your answers. Okay, everybody needs to be coming forward with their stuff. Good. Okay. So, what should you do? Well, first off, this is metabolic acidosis for this patient. Um, and this is some of the NIs that I would recommend. Now, you're going to have, hopefully, maybe some more. But these are the ones that are specific for metabolic acidosis, okay? A diabetic with, meta with a metabolic acidosis. So let's see, let's, we're going to go over them and then we'll look at yours. Do we need to, why do we need to get an, a, a, a potassium level? We know with the, with the metabolic acidosis that hyperkalemia is a common, is an issue. So we need to know what that K is before we move on. Um, we want to give fluids because this patient is definitely dehydrated. We definitely want to give some insulin to drop that blood sugar down of 690. We want to monitor the potassium because remember, as we give the insulin, what's going to happen to that potassium? It's going to drop, yeah, because <laughs> it's going to move into the cells. Okay, and then of course we need to do some education with this lady because what, how she was taking care of herself was not, was, it was uh, just a, an accident ready to <laughs> happen, right? And of course these, the education is how did this should be underneath that. Diet and meds during illness, how to take care of yourself. Okay, so let's look at your suggestions here and let's see what we can do. Okay, the Pacos got insulin. Okay, they went with a partial non rebreather mass to aid in the compensation. And what was that O2 sat? 94. And so, yeah. I agree. Uh, that was not related to the metabolic, but I will take it. Um, monitor the LOC. Continue monitoring the blood sugar. Administer bicarb. I'll take it. Dialysis. No. Patient education. Yes. Okay. All right. Next one. Insulin. Fluids. Bicarb, increase O2, monitor the potassium, safety and fall precautions, I'll take, yeah. and I won't take that one. We're not done yet. We patient you education. You didn't do any patient education on this side? No, you didn't. Okay. And monitor the INO. Well, give me a reason why it's a good one. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it's kind of like standard. That's why I'm saying it's kind of like for everybody. So, oh yeah. But Good point. Let's think, of, let's think about this. So with a non-rebreather, are they going to retain more CO2? Yeah, they are. So I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. It should be just a mask. We didn't put non-rebreather. Yes, you did. No, we didn't. That was Stan's group. That was Stan's group. So you should take a point off of that one. Stan. <laughs> Yeah, that was on your group. How did you argue that one? <laughs> what, what are you thinking, Dan? You know what, though? I'm going 
gonna give it to you any. I'm gonna give it to you just because you you pulled it out and said, "Hey, that's not true, right?" Because really, he's right. We shouldn't be doing the non-rebreather. Okay. And in fact, you'll find most PACU nurses never do non-rebreather. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Next group. Insulin, I agree. Potassium, bicarb, possible ventilator. Give me your reasoning here. As long as a patient is still awake, you don't want to put them on a ventilator until... No, no, but in my scenario, still the ca that case study, it's not my case study, but that case study, they still are awake. So uh, what I'll always do on this... No, okay, safety precautions I'll give you. Uh, diabetic teaching, dialysis, we're talking about, you're going too far on that one, rest and cluster care. That's true for all patients, sorry. Okay, next one. <laughs> Insulin, IV fluids, K, bicarb, dialysis, no, ventilator, no, ECG, of course. Um, but there are reasons I do like the ECG because that hyperkalemia. So, no. <laughs> Patient education, yes. Okay. Um, insulin, potassium, safety, bicarb, O2. When you went with the O2, the thing that I have a problem with your O2, who is this? The LSDs. Um, you said administer O2. You didn't say increase the O2 because she's already on O2. Did you realize she was already on O2? Fluids. Fall. Oh, and even you went with K-exalate because you're thinking maybe her, o her potassium might be. So I'll, I'll compensate. I'll give, I'm, I'm, I'll give you that one. Okay. All right. Next one. Uh, encourage rest. No. IV fluids. Yes. Uh, TPN. What was that blood sugar on that page? What do you think the blood sugar is on this patient? Yeah. We don't want to start TPN. Um, monitor for safety, I agree. Uh, give bicarb, yes. Dialysis ventilator, insulin, yes. Glucose, if insulin drives glucose too low. Well, and give more O2. Yes, good. Okay. All righty. So you want to monitor for safety in the other patients? <laughs> 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 I did. I gave you a point. Don't push it, Stan. Okay. Next one. Okay. Here's your next case study. Jane Doe, 45, admitted to the nursing unit with a severe asthma attack. She has been experiencing increasing shortness of breath since admission three hours ago, and her ABGs look like this. Yes. First, give me the ABG analysis. Okay, everybody got theirs up? Buffet. Buffets. Okay, so uh, we know 
this patient is acidotic and we know it's respiratory. We could have said that just by looking at the patient's asthma, huh? Could have said that that was true. So, okay, so respiratory acidosis, all of you. Okay, next part is, what are you going to do for this patient? And I want you to be very specific because I don't want you just to be looking at respiratory acidosis. I want you to look at, this is an asthmatic. So look a little bit more closely to that sort of. <laughs> I loved your picture on the, uh, <laughs> you're gonna, uh, thank you, thank you.
Okay. Let's see everybody start coming up forward. Say again. I'm on to a new game now. I've given up on Candy Crush. I think I hit like 380 and finally went, I'm done. So. Yes, it's for, I'm doing Maleficent now. Okay. Do we have everybody up here? Yes, we do. Okay, good. All right. So we have a patient with asthma coming into our ER. And so we need to intervene for this patient. So just talking in general, what's the first thing that you're going to do when this patient comes into you in the ED? You're going to find out what they're, you're going to hook them up to everything, right? So we're going to get all our basic assessments, right? We're going to hear their lungs, aren't we? Okay? So when we listen to their lungs, I can tell you she has wheezes, okay? So I'm just going to tell you this is what we have. So what can we do to help her? Her O2 is probably low. So one of the first things I talk about doing is oxygen. The second thing is, is that her breathing is definitely labored. How can we tell how labored it is? Yes, we want to look at that chest expansion. We want to use, see if she's using her accessory muscles. And so is she using these muscles up in here? If she is, we, she's even in more trouble. So what position could we put her in to help her ventilate? We want to put her in high fowlers, absolutely. <laughs> tripod, absolutely, tripod. And usually what I'll do is I'll put the uh, bedside stand there and I'll just have them just like this. Is that really? Oh, okay, an invisible ink. Okay, so we help them breathe. What else can we do to help them out? Bronchodilators, absolutely. We're going to get respiratory in there, giving them a breathing treatment really fast. What else can we maybe do? I don't have it on my next slide, but what do you think might have triggered the asthma attack? Typically some kind of allergy. So what would be a very good drug to consider? Antihistamine is a good one. I hadn't thought of that one. What's another one? That's a good one, too. What's another one? The one I want. No, Benadryl's an antihistamine. What? What did you guys give for that patient that was having the allergic response with, from the antibiotics? Epinephrine. Epinephrine. You all know that now. I, don't tell them about the next simulation. Okay. All right. So let's look here. What should you do? Okay. So I said you need to improve the ventilation, you need to give oxygen, you need to give bronchodilators. And so it just, I don't have the epinephrine and the antihistamines here, but certainly depending on what the reason is why she came in for the asthma would depend on the epinephrine and the antihistamines and even the steroids. Okay? All right. All right. So let's, blue pen. Let's look at what you gave me. All right, the Pacos gave me bronchodilator, <coughs> anti-inflammatory. Are you going to give me some Motrin? Is that what you're giving me? That ain't going to help my asthma. Under? But for asthma? I'll put it there. I'm going to I'm going to investigate it. Okay, administer O2, yes. Uh, monitor the K, yes. Educate on prevention. Incentive spirometer. That sometimes can actually make them get into more of an uh, allergic wheezing and everything. So an incentive spirometer is not a good thing for a patient that's wheezing. Um, because they're wheezing because of reactive airway, not because there's mucus down there or uh, atelectasis down there. It's a different reason. Uh, investigate triggers. Okay. Um, rescue inhaler, education. Well, now you keep on, you're really milking me for all the education now. Um, 
I'll give it to you, but I'm not going to give you safety. O2 administration, I already got that one. RT, yes. Sodium bicarb, not typically for an asthmatic. And repeat ABGs, no. Okay, all right. All right, here we go. Next group. Uh, administer O2, yes. Bronchodilators, yes. Mucolytics. That's really more appropriate for our pneumonias and our COPDers, not so much for our uh, asthmatics. Um, I'll put it over here. Um, inflammatories, over here. Uh, correct, correct K, usually the K is not that high with our patients with asthma. It's usually our metabolic acidotic patients with diabetes or renal failure that we see the K being that uh, thing. But checking, the, I'll give you a point for checking the K. Uh, raise the head of the bed, absolutely. Cough and deep breathe. You have to be really careful with coughing and deep breathing on an asthmatic. You can really get them in more trouble, so no. And listen to their lung sounds, I'll give you that one. Okay. Other side, monitor O2, uh, patient, monitor K. I already took care of that one. Patient education. Uh, check for clubbing. Clubbing is typically something from a long-term chronic respiratory. This is an asthmatic. Patient safety. No. Did I give you safety up there? Well, then I'll give you safety. And remove causative agents. Okay. All right. Next group. Incentives for, okay, monitor airway. Possible ventilator. Consult RT. O2. Bronchodilators, antihistamines, I mean anti-inflammatory antihistamines, I took that one. Uh, monitor K, cocosteroids, head of bed elevated, safety, IV fluids, yes. In fact, really the best one here is PO fluids, asthmatics. You give them a Coke to drink, one of the best helping to, because it has caffeine in it, it actually, it, which has theophylline in it, which actually opens up their lungs. So one of those methods that we do at, at the school system is a cold Coke and let them drink really, and it really does help to open up that airway, surprisingly. Safety, IV fluids, a education. Okay. Next group. Yeah. Okay, give bronchodil. Okay, wait a minute. Just bronchodilators, education, safety, mercolytics, anti-inflammatory, K level, safety, airway, respiratory, relaxation techniques. Head of bed, you haven't done that one yet, okay, good, and O2, okay. All right, and uh, anti-inflammatories, O2, bronchodilators, mucolytics. I don't really like mucolytics. Um, monitor K, <laughs> head of bed, treat cause, I like that one, good one, safety. Patient education, prevention, breath sounds, okay. And O2, bronchodilators, mucolytics, K, patient education, safety, IV, fat, whoops. Okay. All right. It's exhausting when we get up to these. Okay. All right. So, um, so the thing to remember is there's a lot of things that we can do really quite quickly, putting, putting their head of the bed up, putting the oxygen on board, and definitely getting RT in there. That's really helpful. Okay. Next one. We only have this one and one more case study, and then we're done. So this one is John Doe is a 55-year-old male. Admitted to your nursing unit with a recurring 
bowel obstruction. He has been experiencing intractable vomiting for the last several hours despite the use of antiemetics. Here are his ABG results. So, give me an analysis. Okay, you've all got your stuff up, good. Okay, so when we have this patient, we have a pH that's alkalotic and the PCO2 is normal, so you must have metabolic alkalosis, correct? And you do. Okay, now what are you going to do about it for this patient with a small bowel obstruction?
Okay, so give you about 30 more seconds. One minute. One more minute. I can do that. Okay, time up. Bring your answers forward. Like uh, me? No, I was helping to put it back on the board. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so we have a patient with a small bowel obstruction, and he's throwing up. So we know he's losing what? Acids. So we know that's why these blood gases are so obvious of what they're going to be. So this is what we'll see with our patients with small bowel obstruction. So what should you want to do? Okay, so here it is metabolic alkalosis. And, of course, we need to prevent further losses, right? Because he's losing all that acid. Try a different antiemetic. Restore fluid balance. And, then of course, Diamox is one of those drugs that is useful, but I don't see it being used very often. So, um, but it is one that can be used. What else could we do besides this? Oh, I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> but let's talk about a small bowel obstruction. An NG tube, yeah, yeah. An NG tube is a really good one, or even just making the patient MPO because we're already giving them. I would give you two points for that one. I mean, an NG tube, you have to be MPO. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, if you have the NG tube down, we're going to be hopefully uh, lessening the amount of losses rather than letting them throw them up. You know, I know what you're saying. You were going to ask, you say, but yeah, now we're pulling out more acid. Yeah, you are. But the problem is, is that we have a, really what we should go do is some kind of surgery, but if we can't do, but a lot of times NG tube just for a short period of time will get will let the bowel rest long enough for it then to stop so I think we can lessen the amount of losses through an NG tube than the amount that they're throwing up okay all right um, so let's look at your answers okay so NG tube IV fluids keep the patient MPO diamox Auscultate the bowel sounds. Let's have okay. Let's have a vote. How many like the bowel sounds? And I know the ones that are raising your hands are the ones that have it on your. I mean, really. Okay, really. Okay, if there's no bowel sounds or there's lots of bowel sounds, there is it going to change my care? No. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, but wheezes will change my care. Okay, assess respirations. Why? Oh, because. Okay, head of bed, 45 degrees safety. Okay, sorry. Draw, change the to different animal. Okay, administer fluids. Monitor INO. No, fluid, fluid and electrolytes. I said I know I didn't give, her point, give him points for that. 
ask for a Oh, I didn't. Hold on. And Minister... You have to wait your turn. <laughs> You're getting our points right now. You guys are meeting out in the in the parking lot. Is that what I heard? Yeah, he's nursing intervention. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you guys went for calcium because with alkalosis, your calcium can drop. Yeah. So, but you said watch for cross checks and trousseaux. I can never say that. Okay, the other side. Um, pain meds. Suppository. <laughs> Okay. Because, okay, this is, I'm going to give one, I'm going to give one to you just because. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, on the other one, on another student. It's not on yours. Okay. Safety, IV fluids, diamox. Calcium, calcium, seizure precautions, I'm going to, I know, but you're already monitoring it, NG tube, ambulate, okay, um, fluids, diamox, education, Antimedics, uh, potassium, surgery, MPO, okay. Head of bed is not going to make a difference with a bowel obstruction, okay? I mean, if we go down this road, I'm going to be adding on so many things. Okay, so I'm not going to go there. Okay, LSD. IV fluids, potassium, patient education, prepare for surgery, notify the doctor, MP, I'm sorry, MPO, x-ray, safety, education, fire marks, projects, okay. I and <sighs> muscle relaxants. have to think that it's like uh, it is one that is uh, well intractable means that they can't stop vomiting so yeah but but the reason is is that you have a b obstruction there and so the bowel wants to get rid of that so you know there's a good reason why the bowel wants to get rid of that so I'll give you a half a point. Okay. All right. This is the last one. Okay. You're done with the. I'm done with these. Okay. All right. Okay. Jeffrey Brown, age 68, is a retired engineer with acute pneumonia. He has a protective cough, circumoral cyanosis, labored respiration at 28 per minute, <coughs> and he is using his accessory muscles to breathe. Here is his ABGs. So tell me what his ABG analysis is.
two more teams. I need the ABG analysis. Okay. So, what do you think? Acidotic, respiratory. And of course, he's got pneumonia, so we could have guessed that one without even looking at the ABGs, right? So, we got correct, 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 and correct. Okay, everybody's good. Now, what should you do? Okay, I'm giving you a minute from this point on. You know, throwing everything but the kitchen sink on this might be okay in this arena, but not when you hit my alternative formats. 
questions. <laughs> you always wash your hands. Every patient. Okay, everybody finish up writing your last one and bring them forward. And then some, yes. Too late now. <laughs> okay. I like this one. Okay, you got to make sure to look at these ones too. Yeah, don't forget to turn both of ours over. Yeah, ours is Okay, okay. All right, so let's look at this. We have a patient that is in a, uh, respiratory acidosis, correct? And it's from pneumonia. We see a lot of these patients as well, don't we? Um, so this is a good one. So we, wanna, we definitely already know that this is respiratory acidosis. And really what we want to do is we want to improve their ventilation because they're hypoventilating, aren't they? That's why they're in trouble. So all of our focus needs to be helping on that hypoventilation. So let's look at what some things we can do. We definitely want to check what their O2 is, and the odds are you're going to give them O2. We want to give them fluids. Why do we give them fluids? Because it helps to expectorate those uh, secretions. We're going to position the patient in a way that's easy for them to breathe. Coughing and deep breathing, suctioning if necessary, bronchodilators, mucolytics, corticosteroids, and antibiotics are the meds that we would want to give this patient. Okay. So let's look and see what you guys came up with that I have to, okay. So they went with cough and deep breathe, position changes, fluids, suction, mucolytics, antibiotics, O2, incentive spirometer, that's really coughing and deep breathing. I either give you, if I give you credit, I give everyone, how much is that really going to help me? It helps with atelectasis. <laughs> Respiratory, high fowlers. You already said position change. So uh, auscultate, chest x-ray, and antibiotics. You already said antibiotics. OK. Arm. Actually, physiotherapy, chest physiotherapy is a good option here, but it's very rare that you see them do it anywhere. But when we do percussion and drainage, we pop those, that mucus plugs and help them with that. So I will take that. It's rare they do it. Uh, vent, no. Safety, always safety. I give it, I, I'll give you safety because I'll give everyone safety. Uh, education, sputum, no. Hand hygiene and give bicarb. Um, no. Okay. All right. Give O2. What? I gave you credit for it. Oh, I gave it to you. I gave it to you. Honest. Uh, antibiotics uh, and some... Some of these are repeated. Um, uh, 
I got to keep on looking back to see they're not duplicates. Okay. Okay. Oh God, what is this? Okay. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, why am I so excited about that one? It's the, one of the biggest ways to prevent pneumonia. I like that one. Okay, let's see. Obtain, okay. I like this one though, education, and they went with a vaccine, pneumonia vaccine. Hi, <laughs> Paul. Flowers. Yeah, but we can prevent them from getting any more. Okay. All right. Let's see where we are. We are five ten. 43, 5, 10, 13 is going to be 51 and a half. 5, 10, 13 is going to be 51 and a half. Wow, you guys are staying nose and nose. 30, 5, 10, 14. 5, 10, 14. And 5, 10, 13. Okay. So, the LSDs won. Good job. Okay, don't be bitter, the rest of you. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to clap for it. Congratulations. Why you should win, Stan? I like that. Okay. Don't worry, Don.